TV. Welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to first off say thanks for watching. I want to thank all the viewers. I've noticed that a lot of the videos are going up in views substantially on some of the videos, which is, I mean, it means a lot to us and the people who put a lot of effort to make these videos happen for you guys. And I hope you're able to get something out of them. You know, if you're doing your own little light projects or whatever projects you've watched on our channel, um, I hope we're able to help. Welcome to Review It TV. This is the second video we're doing on this uh, X3 Turbo Max. I know we did an initial video showing you the unit, and now we're going to do a video showing you the light bar installation. I went ahead and put the light bar on the brackets already ahead of time because that doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, so I don't think you need me to do the, the video on bolting these. But I will show you a couple things that may make it a little bit different on your installation if you happen to have this roof like I have. So what happened is this roof pulls all the way up and slides into place, as you can see, and then the roof was strapped to the roll bar. Well, with these brackets right here, the brackets will actually go behind your mirror and uh, you'll have the mirror bolted on with two bolts from the reverse side. So that'll actually hold your bracket for your light bar and your mirrors on at the same time. So basically, if you don't have the mirrors on already, if you do, you'll have to take them off. You'll take your two, your brackets, put them on, put the bolts right back through, and bam. The only thing that was difficult is you always seem like you have to make some minor adjustments with the bracket up here, trying to get it to bend into the shape that the light bar kind of sits. Sometimes it doesn't just sit up firm against the, the mounting hole here with the bracket, so you may have to make some adjustments. Other than that, with this roof, I had to make a minor cut on the roof here. This is an actual Cam-Am bra roof. So it's not like a full hard uh, roof, but as you can see right here, I had to modify this roof a little bit so that would slide over the brackets. And then if you come over from the side here and look at it, you get this clean look where this will bolt in, your bracket sits there, there's not a real big gap and everything comes together. So with that being said, what we've done is we've installed that, just in case you have the roof for the record, there you go, you, you'll know how to install it. Um, we ran a string with one of the fish lines that we have through this roll bar. And the string comes down here, as you can see. So I can pull it back and forth at my leisure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the harness that goes to this light bar. And once we get the seat removed, which we'll show you here coming up, uh, there's a, uh, a port in the middle of the console here behind the, the doors that we'll have to take off. And behind there, that port allows you to plug into the power for the battery, which is mounted back behind the back seat. So instead of having to go all the way back to the back through the back seat to the battery, you can mount it up here and connect to the port there in that power block and then you'll be able to power everything without having to use up all the length of your mounting harness because if you don't have enough feet to go all the way back then how are you going to do it so that was kind of a cool idea on behalf of uh, cam am when they installed those in the middle of the consoles so we'll come back to you here in just a second we're going to go ahead and get the seats removed and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and show you how that's done here in a minute and then we'll start digging into the middle of the console and then from there we'll just add the harness and get this bad boy power all right guys, so we're back. Next step is to take the seat out in order to get to the panels that allow you to get to the power port that's in the center of the console. So if you take a look down here, ah, shit. Woo. just pricked my finger, but anyway, if you take a look down here, you can see there's gonna be four bolts here. We got one, two, and then on the back, over here on this side. Now, if you come down this way, you can see down here, there's three, and then over here, there's four. Down here also is your seatbelt bolt. You'll need to take that bolt off. Your seatbelt will come right off and it'll just hang on the side of the door console here. So you won't have to worry about it being attached to the seat any further. Then you'll be able to pop the seat right out. That'll give us access to the panels that'll be down in the center area. It will power the light. All right, so we got the seatbelt bolt off. Let me show you what it looks like. It's just a plastic ring. A bolt that looks kind of like that. If you have this unit, it may vary from unit to unit. But the seatbelt is simple. So once you take the seatbelt off from the bolt that I just showed you, you're just going to pull it up. And that's simply the bolt that's holding it on. So it just sits down in there into its own little area where it bolts. And you're just going to let it free hang. So once I get the rest of the four bolts out of the seat that we showed you earlier, um, we'll go ahead and get the seat removed and then we'll start our next clip. Oh, and just for the record, <laughs> When you heard me go, ah, earlier, it's because I tasered myself with the flashlight. This flashlight here happens to be a taser, so that one's on me. But yeah, oops. Okay, so we got the bolts off the seat. So the behind the seat of the front passenger seat are these two bolts that'll hold the back seat on in this particular unit. 
And these are the two front bolts that were right down in here. They just go right through the bracket there. So we're gonna go ahead and yank the seat out now. It should come out. Got the seat belt off, four bolts is what I was told, so. Just like that, your seat's out. So, set your seat somewhere nice so it doesn't get ruined and scratched up or at least dented up and tore up. So next we're gonna do is we're gonna take these panels off right here. As you can see, all these panels down here are where we're gonna need access to install the harness that comes with this. See here, looks like a bolt here. I don't even know if that holds that on or not. These may just pop right off that easy. It looks like it. Let's see, yeah, I think so. Check it out. That comes off. Looks like this might need a little. And bam, that is what we needed access to. So this is the panel. As you can see, it has two slots and three clips. So you're gonna wanna get these two slots, slit back on, and then the clips will plop into place and that'll be it. So you set that guy to the side and come around, look at this. This right here is the power port that I was talking about that you need access to. If not, you're gonna to have to go through this way and wire it to the back of the seat. So you just pop this off and you have three screws. So I was told that the bottom screw was um, to the ignition. So if the ignition's not on, it won't allow power. Of course, the black is the ground. So you're gonna put your black wire to the ground. If you put your power wire to this center port, what it's gonna do is allow you to turn on your bar lights without the unit having to be started. If not, if you have it down at the bottom here, you're gonna have to wait until the unit is started to be able to get the power to the bar light. So, what we'll do is we'll get everything wired into here. And here's another panel. I'm not sure how this one pops off. Probably the same concepts here. I'm sure. Yeah, just a little. And I don't even need to take that all the way off, but you can see to get your wires fed through the area, you're gonna go either over the top or the bottom of this console, starting with your power source here and then uh, you'll have a fuse and then you're gonna run that to your actual uh, rocker switch and then you'll run the other power wire up through the roll cage to the light bar. So we'll get some of this installed and as we're doing it, we'll show you guys here in just a moment. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to install the harness which will go over to that rocker switch which we just showed you in the last clip which will eventually connect up to the light bar. So this is the relay. This is the power cables and I actually had to snip the ends off and put some smaller ones on so it would fit on that little power port down there. It also has your fuse. This is what's gonna go through the top of the center of the console and the top of the dash up to the rocker switch. And eventually this longer one will also make its way the same route, coming up through the center console over the dash and this will connect to the light bar once we add the other remaining clips that connect here that are hanging loose on that light bar. And, We'll connect the power cables last to that little power uh, source down there. Once we get that installed, we'll give you a little quick run around so you can see what it looks like and then we'll start getting ready to connect the light and turn it on. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the relay. Here's the power source that'll go right to the ports over there. You wanna find a bolt that you can connect to your relay. I found this little center bolt, it already has a nut, but there's enough room to slip that over there and to stick another nut right over that. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's a little tricky to get that nut on with my big old sausage fingers. But we'll get it on there one way or another. Come on, baby. There we go. You don't have to tighten it crazy. Just get on there and that'll hold your relay in place. Make sure it's, I mean, you do want to tighten it enough. So don't forget to get a socket and tighten that. But that should keep this in a safe place out of the way. And then that gives me still enough room to go ahead and install my power and negative wires. Power negative or ignition power negative your choice all right guys so here's the rocker switch the led light switch we just added into the dash and then this is the cord behind it you're going to enter the cord in first and then push the switch in and lock in place um, that harness i showed you was the wire coming over so we're running it through as you can see down here if you look down this way we ran it through we're going to run it a little bit up and over the top of this steering column into this guy and we'll plug it in and we'll wrap up the excess and then zip tie it under the console here um, or the dashboard I should say 
and then that'll give us the direct connection from the switch down there to the power area and then I'll show you guys here in a moment once we connect the power what it looks like and then we'll turn on the light bar. Okay guys, so I already showed you the uh, rocker switch that was wired to the rocker switch wire that comes into this general harness area. We went ahead and put the relay on a little nut here. I just put it over a screw that had a little bit of extra thread left and put a, a nut on there to hold that in place, so that's good. Well, like I said, hook these two guys last, you know, once we get it all ran. This is the final wire here. This is the long one that's gonna go all the way through the dash, up through the uh, roll bar and to the light bar itself. So once I get this ran, which if you look down here, you're just gonna go through this little area here. You can run it right under here and right up through the back over your dash and right up to your hole that's gonna be through the roll cage that'll eventually lead up to that power source to the light bar. Okay guys, so we went ahead and we got that longer cable I showed you in the last clip. We ran it down the console and above the steering wheel under this panel. This panel comes off by about six different little bolts. Then it gives you access down in here as well as coming out from under the steering wheel. So since we were able to fish line this, what I did is I took a, a wall fishing tool and I stuck the metal down there, tied it to a string and pulled the string through on both sides. Then I just took my wire and fed it through, tied it to the string and pulled it all the way up here. So now I can finally connect it over here to the bar light. Once I do that, any access or slack that I have from this, I'll just tuck it back down and pull it through and zip tie it under the panel. So once we're done getting this connected and ran it in straight, we'll go back there and hook up the battery and we'll give her a try. Okay, finally the finished product. So we have all the wiring done, we have the brackets, the light mounted, we've ran all the harnessing, we've connected it to the battery. And I need to correct myself because I told you about the different options about uh, powering it to this power block, wiring it there. Well, what I found out upon wiring mine is I ended up having to put it on the bottom. I haven't tightened this up, but I'm just showing you um, instead of using the middle power port. And then, of course, the ground's just going to go to the ground. Reason being is the little light switch, the rocker switch stayed lit up regardless if the unit was on, which means it eventually will just keep going until it drains your battery. So if you put it down to the ignition, I found out you don't have to start your vehicle. You just put your key on and hit your start button once to, to start up your dashboard. And then it lights up your switch and we'll give it a try right now and show you what we're talking about. So if you haven't seen these cool keys right here, these are the keys that go on there. It's kind of like clamps onto a ball. So let me go ahead and come around this way, guy. I'll show them here. So on this, here's the rocker switch we just added. Everything was really a clean install. Everything went smooth. The key plugs in over here. Kind of clamps onto this little ball. And then what I do is I just hit this start button over here one time. And you can see the light bar switch is lighting up. So now if you look at the wall over there, bam. Go ahead and get a front view of it. And I'll turn it on real quick. Real quick, just so you can see it. Well, we've gotten to the end of the video here. Um, conveniently enough, right before we went to do the final finale and show you guys the light bar turn on, we ran out of card space. So we literally just turned off right when we went to turn the light on and show you. So we're doing a outro for you guys. So uh, the light bar is already installed. Everything's done. You've gotten to see how it was uh, installed. The installation is pretty easy, uh, straightforward. Um, they didn't come with directions, but the harness, you can see you have your side with the power cables, the negative, positive. You have the side that plugs into your light bar, and then you have the side that goes to your rocker switch. So just running it through the console is pretty much it, and connecting it to those three uh, individual components puts it all together. It's pretty easy installation. So let me put the key in. I'll go ahead and hit the ignition button, and we'll turn it on and let you get a look. And here it is. Bam, just like that. And if you guys want to see it in a little bit of a darker scenario, let me just kill the garage light and I'll turn it on so you can see it in a little bit of a darker area. All right, let's try it one more time. This should give you a little bit better concept on how it looks. There it is. Bright enough, gets everything you would need when you're out there in the mesas or wherever you're gonna go with this guy. But, <clears throat> so, with that being said, 
we'll go ahead and cut the video right here. Thanks for watching. I don't know if you can still see my face, but whatever. I appreciate you guys once again coming to Review TV to watch these videos and support the channel. Our next video is going to be the installation of the Bluetooth stereo system. So look out for that video. And uh, as always, thanks and have a great day. If you need me, call me.